Welcome to Four Kids Flashback. Hello, welcome to Four Kids Flashback, coming at you live from the Met Gala. No, that's not true. Uh, hi, I'm Tara Sands, joined by Steve Yurko. But he is dressed for the Met Gala. (laughs) Totally, yeah. I look like uh, like a cyborg or whatever the hell Zendaya wants to dress up as these days. Yes. Oh, you even. Oh my God. So it's hard. No, when you're on when you're on Twitter, it's hard not to someone's not to see it. it. And then yeah, you got you got at least a few friends that like talking about it. So that's how you find it. I didn't even. I wouldn't have known it was going on. Right. Well, fair enough. And, I mean, and for those it's listening, the themes it's not going that confuse on. me. It's been months. The, yeah, the themes confuse me, too. I was told, like, maybe last year's was camp. And I'm like, isn't that what the Met Gala always is, though? It's, yeah. I, I would have gone with summer camp and worn, like, <laughs> like khaki shorts mm-hmm. and, like, had a, a bug catching net. Uh, speaking of bug catching nets, Pokemon was based on bug catching. That brings us right back to the podcast. Please Look so at that. Cool. Look at yeah. Ha- yeah, I get, uh, how did I do wow. that on my with my hands? S- Steve is doing see. a big circle with his hand and his bearded face. Oh, okay, yeah, it's looking good. It's not a huge beard. It's just this is the extent it's, of what I can grow. It's uh, it's coming in nicely. Thank you, thank you. I wasn't blessed with the beard genes, but I realized I'm going to wear a mustache next time. <laughs> just to I tried growing one out like early in the pandemic. I was like, I don't have to go anywhere. Let's see how this goes, and I quickly like gave up on it. Uh, I'm not that well. But sorry, my, beard, if my bearded one. friends were like person. my bearded friends were like you gotta, you know, you just gotta let it grow. Um, but but Steve, you did it right in time for summer when you're not gonna want all that hair on your face. That's my <laughs> only concern. Let's see. For you. Though half like I think uh, most of my life now is spent indoors in front of computer monitors all day. So all right, maybe fair. I don't feel so bad. Okay. Does it get well? I, I have so many questions, but I, I realize that's not what this not podcast as much is about. <laughs> it doesn't. It, c- it was itchy initially. Now it's kind of just whatever. Okay. All right. Um. So yeah. Well, like we said, today is the Met Gala, but this episode will probably air in two or three months because we we record ahead of time mm-hmm. uh, for editing purposes and things like that. Uh. But uh. I am so excited because in a few days, I leave to go to San Antonio with the biggest reunion of four kids actors ever, ever assembled. Uh, NostalgiaCon. It will have passed when you hear this, but they will be doing more conventions. Um, he already has two more cities announced, New Orleans and Houston. Um, but yeah, there are about, like I guess over 20 of us is so many people from the podcast wow. who have done we've interviewed will be there yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> hopefully you guys all get like a big group photo of everybody at some point. I hope so mm-hmm. yeah I think so um I think we will we're, we're having a dinner but not everyone can come the we're, to the people who are coming in early we're gonna have a dinner but it won't be complete mm-hmm. uh I have four kids flashback hats for everyone <laughs> Uh, that I'm going to force them to, I'm, my friends must be so sick of me pushing this on them, but, uh, I'm, I, I I have not gone to any of my high school reunions. This feels like the closest thing that I will ever get to a high school reunion. I passed on mine, my first one, and I don't see myself ever going to any of them. Yeah. (laughs) I feel okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah. But I'm like nervous. I have that nervous, um, energy that you would have before, a high school reunion because it's been like 20 years since I've seen some of these people in person. Mm-hmm. And most, ah! pe- and a lot of people, I don't remember their names unless we went to like as far back as elementary school. I remember right, Well, f- high school, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I get to look at the convention uh, <laughs> list and, and figure out who's going. But mm-hmm. <laughs> honestly, if it hadn't been for this podcast, I probably would have forgotten a lot of these people. Not no no that's actually you know what I take that back I would not have it, it's not that big a group it's not like hundreds of kids in high school I knew all these people mm-hmm. <laughs> and Sean Conrad is going to be performing the One Piece rap live is that is and now is this like the first time ever or yes oh nice and so and Jason Page will be performing uh, the Pokemon song like nice. it's uh, this is what I have wanted to happen. <sighs> So and, I, and this is the place to be, you know, San Antonio. I San Antonio. I, I, I hope it's a really uh, big turnout. I hope 
Uh, I hope you get to do some fun panels. Because I will, I will say, I because we, we did a panel at ALA earlier this year, and it was a lot of fun because I, 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 I had no clue what the kind of response would be, but it was mostly very, you know, positive. You know, I think that was, was a. I had yeah. so much fun with you on that panel. Like we had a great moderator. Too, yes, which, which always helps. <laughs> Thankful. She, she was yeah. awesome. Uh huh. Emma. Uh, Emma was our moderator. But I just, I think people were obviously there because they were passionate about something. Yes. You know, there, so. And it was billed as a four kids flashback panel. You yeah. can actually, if you go to our YouTube page, you can see that panel. Uh, it is uh, our YouTube page. If You have to put in youtube.com slash at four kids flashback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it's there. And it is also on our Patreon page, I believe. I, have, I will double check that um, and make sure it's there for you. But uh, yeah, panels are hit can be hit or miss, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was fun. And also, like, again, this is the very first Nostalgia Con, and I know he's like, kind of building up the brand. So, like, even if this one isn't insane, I feel like it's getting the, it's all about getting the word out on uh-huh. these kinds of shows. So uh, definitely go to their website. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to see my friends. Uh, I hope you so. got a killer view from your hotel. <laughs> Oh, Steve's making fun of me because I like to post on Facebook <laughs> my private. I don't put it on my public page, but no. uh, I put I put my bad hotel views because I got during the pandemic. I got very sick of everyone posting their their beautiful backyards and pools and or when they go on their beautiful vacations with their perfect families, you know, because Facebook, it's all like smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. I got really sick of looking at it all. So so I started when I started going to hotels and I would get like a really bad view. I would put a picture of that up and be like, it's breathtaking. Uh, but I, you know, Steve, I do get good views and I just don't post them. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You want to share <laughs> Everyone like only shares like like you said like Facebook is smoke and mirrors and they only share the good stuff. You want to just share the bad stuff. Yeah, you gotta balance well, it uh, out. It's totally it's like it's like the force. Would, <laughs> thank you, thank you for understanding. So it's like that's my way of also because I I had friends who were like you're so lucky you travel and I'm like you don't really know where like it's not mm-hmm. there's nothing glamorous about a lot of the travel I yeah, do. Yeah, sometimes it's very touch and go and oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about the view. Like, you know, even a nice hotel, sometimes like there'll be tons of construction and it's, mm-hmm. you know, the elevators next to you and it's making noise all night. There's all these little things that that sleep to me is the most important part of the hotel. So if that's not happening, then I'm like, I hate this hotel. Um, like I had a beautiful hotel recently that was right near a train track and it was the most beautiful historic hotel. But all night long. I don't know if that sounds like a train, but uh, all night long. Trains running late. Hmm. It was, I I realized that this was, I can't, I wish I could remember where this was, but this, this small city had been built around this train stop. So this hotel had all this incredible history. I mean, it was, it was gorgeous. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. I was, my room was stunning and I was like, but that friggin' train, um, you know who loves trains? Sebastian Arcellus. I don't know if he loves trains. Um, I hope so. I'm really psyched. I haven't seen Sebastian in person in a long time, aside from seeing him on a stage, which I didn't get. I have to tell him I saw him in a show years ago because we didn't get to see each other. Um, but I, you guys, he's somebody you guys have, have requested that we get on the show, and it was just a matter of time. So uh, enjoy it. Now it's time. <laughs> now it's time. Enjoy the view. Our guest today is Sebastian Arcellus. Sebastian did a ton of stuff at 4Kids. You know him best for playing Yo and Zeke, who later become became How in Shaman King. He was his first show there, I believe, was Ultraman Tiga. He also appeared in Yu-Gi-Oh! and Ultimate Muscle, if we can believe what IMDB says. Uh and later in Dinosaur King. So we are here to get all <laughs> our questions answered. Well, what he can remember, and we understand it has been a minute. Welcome to the show, Sebastian Arcellus. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. I can't, I can't believe you actually even uh, were able to, I mean, Ultraman Tiga, where did you even pick that up? That's amazing. Okay. So this is what's so crazy about this podcast. We've been finding lost media. Ultraman Tiga, 
became Lost Media. And we inter- we interviewed one of the writers, producers who had a bunch of episodes. So we've put them up online. <laughs> Wow. You sound so wow. young and sweet. We did a watch party and you said you sound so young and sweet in it. Uh, Yazumi, right? Was that the June, character's name? Yazumi. Yeah. I, wait, let me see because I just wrote this down. I think down. it was. Yes. June Yazumi. Yazumi. That's right. It was real. I mean, so wild. I mean, just first of all, thanks for inviting me to join you guys. Uh, it's a blast from the past. It's a really t- a, ha- a lot of happy memories. It's okay um, if they're mixed. We're, we're okay they're, with that, they're too. Got, they're going to be a little mixed. I'm older now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, speaking of Yazumi, I mean, how I even got involved in all all of that world was so random. Okay, tell us, this, tell us the origin story and how weird that a live action dub was your first job there. So yeah, let's it, get it into really that. Was. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I, I'm at a deli with a friend of mine who had just graduated from NYU. And um, I was a young actor in New York, obviously uh, temping and whatnot. Um, And we're sitting there eating and he runs into an old administrator from NYU who Mm -hmm. says, you know, they catch up for a bit. And then he says, hey, listen, um, I have some friends across the street who are looking for young actors for some voice dubbing. Um, Or... I don't even know if they even specifically said it was animation at the time, or I think it may have actually been live action because okay. it was specifically well, for Chris Ultraman. Well, because Chris Collet is the one who was contacting NYU. So that makes a lot of sense. While yeah, he, yeah, there it he is. wanted to try to get d- new people in. Yeah. So I obviously didn't know this person, and I was a little presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> I have officially had a conversation with my friend about this back in the day. But, you know, he was like, you know, we're looking, he's looking for young actors. And so my friend was like, that's cool. I'll audition. And I was like, I'm a young actor too. (laughs) And uh, sort of, I guess, wedged my foot there in the door. And we both went in and auditioned. And as it turned out, I I, I was able to to get cast. And did your friend get cast more importantly? He he didn't. He didn't. Um, So I feel a little guilty now. No, you're you're good. I think you're good. He's probably doing fine. I'm not worried about him. His friend was John Stamos. I just pulled that out. Exactly. Uh, as it, uh, and I think the reality is I only really got cast and probably every time thereafter, just because I had a really high voice where I was able to really have a high voice How if manipulated. much, I was going to say, I mean, you're a singer and we've talked to so many singers on this show. I don't remember yeah. you actually sounding like that in real life. So you were ma- obviously manipulating your voice. To totally manipulating. Like yeah. Yeah. I mean, I listened back, you sent me a few of those clips and yeah. I listened back and I I actually can't believe that I'm just talking that high. I mean, it's so <laughs> it's high. Well, okay. So what Sebastian's talking about is our amazing listeners send us, we've been trying to like, four kids did not give us individual credits. They just would list the names of the people who worked on the show. So we're trying to fill in some blanks and figure out who played who. And one yeah. of our listeners sent a couple of clips that might be Sebastian. Uh, do, were you those characters? <laughs> yes, to okay. all of them. Okay. Although I will say that there was one that I literally have z- almost zero recollection of doing. It was the one. Um, okay, I'm going to pull um, it up right now so I could because I know the people at home are like, "What are those roles?" Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. So the roles he's saying yes to are Rex, obviously from. Um, well. So yeah. So Go one ahead, of sorry. the Rexes, Espa. Esperoba. Esperoba. That's Sorry, true. the way this is Roba. Rafe yeah. in Destiny Rafe. Deoxys and Marcel Bonaparte in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So those are the four that we are confirming. We're we're detectives here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's so- a true story. Marcel, I have zero recollection of doing, but I'm pretty sure that sounds like me. And and uh, <laughs> the rest. <laughs> I mean, when I saw the visual, it kind of sparked memory. But those sort of the one-off movies were. Were, were kind of their own little silo moments. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, I have yeah. less of a recollection of those as I do um, the shows themselves. But Rex was interesting because Rex was a. They they came to me as a sound alike. I don't even know yeah. what the. You probably know the circumstances. I don't. 
Um, uh, Steve they, knows the circumstances better than I do. What was that? Was Sam right? Uh, yeah, Sam yeah, Rigo originated the voice, yeah. and I don't know because re- re- the character <laughs> had three voices. I'm not sure if you came in second or th- no. It might yeah, be. I'm ranking. sure it wasn't ranking. I just made that, that yeah. particular voice was mm-hmm. a killer. I mean, that was hard. Well, um, Sam moved to that. Mm-hmm. Then it became. I think Tony took over right after Sam, Tony Salerno, who's also one of the directors. Oh, and I then he Tony. chose to leave. So it was all, you yeah. know, people chose to leave for different reasons. And um, so that's sure. why it was a sound alike. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, yeah. I mean, I had to be perfectly frank at the time, I hadn't done much of any voice work. I, I separately, I, I, for two decades, I was doing, Door the Explorer and Go Diego Go and a lot of other cartoons afterwards, um, right? afterwards. Yeah, yeah. but at the time I really hadn't right so I mean I was an actor I was doing a lot of stage work and um, over the course of my time at four kids um, I was sort of juggling a bit as we were doing all of that studio work but I really walked into it fairly cold and everybody there was really welcoming warm and it was a, a fast sort of masterclass <laughs> in how to uh, approach um, this kind of material. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I will say, as I'm sure you've heard a thousand times and probably said a thousand times yourself, it has served me incredibly well in other ways. I mean, the ability to, to scan a document quick, mm-hmm. uh, learn it quick, apply it quick, memorize. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, you know, you too, you know, we've learned how to change our timing down to the millisecond you know he's so right and yep. to the, yeah well to and day, sebastian's doing... talking about that we didn't get scripts in advance and when you tell people in oh, yeah. other parts of the industry that you don't get scripts in advance they look at you like you're crazy i mean especially yeah. theater especially like no rehearsal no uh, yeah but you're so we just right. had to just do it yeah and when i look at it I look at some of it back. I, I, I have hard, a hard time watching any of it, anything I've done, <laughs> especially. Um, oh, you were, you were so brilliant no, and like such a pro. No, it was insane. But, but I sound like I'm learning to dub. You know what I mean? Like the early stuff. Yeah, I'm like, sure. or I'm like, oh my God, if I had had one more take, I was finding the lip flap. If I had done oh, yeah. one more take, I could have nailed it. So it's that, it's that kind of stuff. It's being young. Like the stuff yeah, exactly. that most people are going to hear me in is stuff where and, and Steve and I talk about this as an artist's th- dilemma in general is like, oh, but that wasn't my best work. And oh, that's yeah. what they're going to hear. But but well, yeah. how lucky were we to be learning on the job <laughs> and getting paid, Truly. getting paid Truly. mediocrely, mediocrely. That's not a word. But to do it. You look back. It's so true. I mean, you look back and, you know, maybe we got the flap right or maybe we got the timing right. But maybe the performance you know, you, you you can't rate that stuff now. Um, um, it's hard. But I mean, I'm sure it's true of, you know, someone who's remembered for some of their earliest work as opposed to, you know, the decades of work they've right. done since. Um, but uh, it was such a an amazing job to have sort of just in general, right, the idea of what we were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and for young actors working in New York, I mean... You know, we were getting paid to do something we loved. It was with great people. Yeah. Uh, and re- there was really, it was a steep learning curve. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I, I always felt like I was, kind of, I was kind of on the outside of it. Like, I didn't quite understand it until I was in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just kind of walked into this building and... Jim Malone was a cool cat who was like, come on in. On his rollerblades, yeah. <laughs> with his rollerblades and motorcycle helmet. And <laughs> and and suddenly you're in the booth and being directed by these incredible actors themselves and, you know, people that are still pals, right? Yeah, um, crazy. It was really fun. And it's, to this day, you know, some of my nieces and nephews still think it's the coolest work I've ever done. So, Isn't that insane? Um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, really I mean, and, and I, what we learned through doing the show, too, is like the, you know, one of the complaints is, oh, they keep using the same people over and over. Like you were in every show there. But there were, the reason was when we talked to the directors is you were good and you worked fast. And those were the reasons they there was a learning curve. And once someone knew how to dub, like you knew how to dub, they gave you a lead on a show. You were proficient and good at it. 
they just wanted to make sure the work got done. <laughs> so yeah, it's they had deadlines. Yeah, right? crazy deadlines. Every week since 2009, the One Piece podcast has discussed and analyzed the latest installments of the hit anime and manga series, One Piece. Now you can see the podcast crew live and in person in New York City. It's a chance to see your favorite podcast up close and potentially win some free swag. Check out the One Piece podcast at City Winery in New York City on Sunday, August 25th at 7 p.m. Just go to OnePiecePodcast.com to get your tickets today. Again, that's Sunday, August 25th at 7 p.m. at City Winery in New York City. So Ultra Mantiga, I, I can't believe still that that was your first show because to me, matching that lip flap, after that, everything else must have seemed a little bit easier. Or am I wrong about it? I think, I think, you're ac- I think that's accurate. Yeah. I didn't quite know. <laughs> I mean, look, I grew up uh, loving shows like that. So on some level, it really was an interesting first experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I never anticipated that it would be anything more than that. Um, I, I guess if you really look at it, I did, I did sort of a, I just played a lot of high pitched (laughs) nerdy. um, I mean, pretty much across the board, but Ultraman Tiga was, yeah, it was the start. Um, And then um, you start to get involved with the other producers and, and directors and auditioning. And I can't even specifically say what was next. I mean, I guess Road Rage, maybe. Road Rage. Well, um, what is he thinking of, Steve? Uh, Ultimate Muscle. Ultimate uh, Muscle. Oh, Road Rage right. is the character. Yeah. Okay, sorry, my bad. I, you, my, you, probably, you probably know. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, you my, probably know my time there, too. better than I do. So Steve grew up watching this stuff, which is why he actually remembers it. Yeah. Like, when yeah. you're in right. it, you're less like... It's so interesting. So, Steve, sorry, go on. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Um, might have been Yu-Gi-Oh next because I think like the Asparoba episodes, I think that's those, true. Little one-offs. Yeah, yeah. I think those were airing, I think in spring of 2003, maybe. And then I think like you were probably recording, uh, Ultraman and Ultimate Muscle around that time. And those aired in the, f- I'm impressed. I'm no, impressed by your chronology. Months. I know. Sorry, he's, I'm getting he's myself an some encyclopedia. Stuff, <laughs> trying my best. Shaman, I mean, but, Shaman yeah. King was... <laughs> I mean, that was a really formative experience. Uh, Shaman King was interesting because, mm-hmm. one, I, obviously, as you know, and as your listeners know, I ended up having to play both of them, right? So right. there was Yo at the time, obviously, and um, and Zeke. But as when Shaman King started, I had been cast in the Broadway production of Rent, which mm-hmm. is a... You know, hard rock and roll musical to do eight shows I remember a week. thinking that you were so cool. You were one <laughs> of my first, like I had some some older friends on Broadway, but you were like a peer that had had done it. And I just remember being like, Sebastian, so cool. uh, So not cool. So we were so happy for you, though. <laughs> I, I do remember everyone being incredibly happy. Yeah, it was but, pretty special. It was very but special. But that is... But it was so Eric hard. To talk to, so hard to sing that show. So it's hard to sing that show to begin with and then to come in and do... 15 to 18 hours of dubbing over the course of a week. And as you well know, so much of that were these battle cries, right? So we're just Well, for that, for that character specifically. Yeah, I would just yell at you and then you would do the battle cry. But I was saying, yes. uh, you know, but because the, the, the character was so high pitched, you know, you're singing like, you know, like. With these like right. it, yeah. in these crazy stratospheres where at nighttime you're you're singing rock and roll. So it was a really delicate balance of trying to do all that. And Tony Salerno, who directed this, obviously, was so patient and kind. And I loved it. I loved the fact that we were able to go in there and work for hours and do this show, which mm-hmm. which I can't find, you know. I mean, you find those that one six DVD version yeah. of it that's out there i don't know what that is but um no it's it's so it's crazy this is I, again it's not lost lost but it's not easy to get yeah and which which show are we referring to shaman, shaman king. king yeah oh accessible it's accessible is now. it accessible oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. okay Steve yeah knows. they uh, uh discotech put out a um I think they call them sd blu-rays where they're not like the fullest quality but it's okay all the episodes of that dub on a Blu-ray. How does it, and you can be honest, how does it hold up? I, I own it. Okay. Uh, I have not gone back and I haven't had the time to go back and watch okay. it. 
um, because I I was a big Shaman King fan at the time. Um, and but I was a little, you know, and I don't I don't know. Lay it on me. Lay it on me. Tara, no, no, go ahead. Lay, uh, lay the truth. Well, I don't lay know. Lay the truth I, on because I think I know where this is going. I, I, cause I, I could tell you could, I, uh, by that, you probably know like four kids has a reputation sure. of kind of being like, oh, they ruin shows. Yeah. They butcher shows this and to that. make them appropriate for children. Yeah. yeah. Saturday morning. Oh, cartoons. I might as well start with this. Did you sing in the opening song? I did. Yes. Oh. Yeah. We got <laughs> oh, confirmation. Yeah. We needed confirmation. Sorry, we, we talked about before, uh, we brought you on. So that's why that's fresh in my head. I did. I, Yeah. I did. I did that. And if I'm not mistaken, Jim is the other voice. You know what? That is. I have to double check. I don't think it is, but I'm going to double check it. I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. OK. Pretty positive. Um, OK. Hey, it's Tara jumping in here. I double, triple, quadruple checked with Jim Malone and he is not singing on that Shaman King theme song and does not know who the singer is. Uh, and unfortunately, John Siegler doesn't remember. So it will remain a mystery for now. You, 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 by all means, double check. But yeah, they had me sing the section that's him in his voice, which is kind mm -hmm. of interesting because he's sort of putting on voice while. Uh, but right. um, but the look around you, look beyond part, I think was Jim. And then I and I sang as, as yo. But yeah, um, they just called Did me in just... one day and they were like, <laughs> you want to take a look at this and see if you um, could sing? And I'm trying to remember now. If. If it was an on the spot choice to have it, like, I think they asked me, like, do you want to just sing it? And I was like, well, what if I sing it in the voice? Oh, I see. So mm -hmm. they might have just been using you I as a singer. I think it might have been, right. yeah, for initially as a singer. And I was like, well, what if I just do it as yo, uh, to the extent that I can with voice with manipulation? certain notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then we did. We, we just kind of. I love that. Yeah, I have we, no idea. I think yeah. you're probably the only actor who is singing, aside from maybe Darren and Fighting Foodons, like who's singing in the theme song. It's such a that's so cool. It was at the time. It was super cool, and it still is actually. And, and I mean, I, I, yeah. I but you I, can tell I, me, yeah, Steve. I'm, I'm is not, that was I'm, that? I'm not. Did you? I'm not escaping. Dig the, the opening. Uh, the question that was brought upon me, because um, I was I was getting older at the time when the show airs. You no, hated the opening. Opening. You hated the opening. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, people love the music. The music, the music is one yeah. of the uncontroversial things about four kids. Nice. People but, love because at the music. time I was yeah. I was big into the manga. So the announcement of four kids adapting the anime was kind of met with a little disdain. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be watered down a little bit. It's gonna be edited, <laughs> and, and yeah, it was. I but. The voice, I never had any. I most, I, I, I would say, like, I think the voices were all very true to the characters. I think that show was very well cast and I enjoy, like, at least I'm like, you know, it's very in character, but it's just, it's a version that's unfortunately for me for a younger audience. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, sure. Steve, the question I was leading you into is does he remember recording the uncut? dub version which i have no memory and of that, and i thought that was a good layup there so at one point for kids they made this decision to try doing an uncut mm -hmm. dub okay he's nodding is, he's nodding and was, thinking mm -hmm. yeah it's very short-lived uh tara didn't even remember working on it and we had Top to redo it. we had to redo it right the, yeah you, you, re I, you yeah. went back to the beginning this. yeah uh i don't remember mm -hmm. the content of it like were we cursing it, i don't even know like i don't know i think it was the violence there, like they could show was, blood they yeah. could i think it was more yeah. about the violence mm -hmm. right is that steve's watched that one more yes, recently but there was there was cursing i think morty uh, cursed what i i do yeah i remember <laughs> yeah. Morty, morty cursed. i think morty cursed a lot off, off uh off, yeah <laughs> yes off air. i uh, think that's <laughs> definitely true we just interviewed I think we all did. And, yeah yeah the, 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 i think mm -hmm. i do recall we're like we're going back are we gonna do it again <laughs> like I, I do recall that vaguely and if I'm not mistaken, I feel like that's the DVD set that I was able to find online. It was like the that's easier to cover. yeah probably yeah I think that's I think those are the only DVDs of Shaman King from that era. I have one I have um, one um, figurine still in the packaging. I remember that I do. Yeah, I have I do oh, nice. 
It's gotten smushed, but I have it in the packaging yeah, too. I, love it. I and I can't believe they must. That must have been one of the only things they gave us. Yeah, because I don't remember that. I I have, but I couldn't remember if I bought it or if they gave it to us. I don't think they gave us much swag. No, I mean no. That's why I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. like, but if we both have one, then maybe I was surprised to get a paycheck. Us? I uh, yeah. Let's. Yeah. It, it, so they were too busy uh, trying to make money. Yeah, off you know, uh, oh the cool thing about Shaman King though is that. It really, it was sequential, right? So it really felt like we were telling this mm -hmm. story. So it felt different. Um, I mean, I can't say that other words, others weren't that I didn't work on and whatnot, but it wasn't episodic in the same sense. It, it really felt right. like we were... Mm -hmm. Like Ultraman feels like standalone episodes, yeah. whereas Shaman King did feel like it was following the manga. Yeah. Um, and then never finished mm -hmm. telling the story, which is we'll, what we'll get to is the remake, which you and I... T messaged about a little bit, but yes. we'll get into that. Yes. But I do have a question to go back to, like your start, your you book Rent on Broadway, um, and something we've talked to other actors on the podcast about is first of all, how many callbacks did you have for Rent? Because that's you know, like <laughs> yeah, it's epic, right? Everyone has like eighteen callbacks. Yep. I think ultimately, I think it was about three. Uh, oh, that's like nothing. I went up. There was one time where I went up to the Apollo uh, on 125th Street, had an audition that was cut. And then I had an audition where I think I sang maybe eight bars. I mean, it was like, it was so full that they, it was really limited. Yeah. Uh, and then I was called back once. And then I think I was called back in front of the director. And then I was called with an offer. Oh, that's fast. But, but called back five minutes later to say, and they said, wait, hang on a second. Not sure. That's so four kids of them. Which was very, very <laughs> unnerving. I, I was what? As it turns out, there was an alumni issue, which is to say, the, I was cast originally as a swing to cover six different parts, mm -hmm. but the guy that was playing the swing at the time, who is another four kids person, who because we were doing Rent, I, I told about the audition. He came in and got a part on. Who Sean was King, it? Matt Kaplan. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so funny. Okay. So Matt, uh, Matt was playing a swing on Broadway and was moving up to play Mark in Rent, but there was a moment where it looked as though Anthony Rapp was coming back to the show, and that oh. would have put my hiring on hold. As it turns out, Matt did elevate. I moved into the swing position, and then, you know, uh, it was a bunch of musical chairs from there. Okay, but when Sebastian talks about being a swing, this is the hardest job on Broadway. So, yeah. like, you have to learn what all of these characters do, and it's so easy to get them confused. Like, this is not easy. And then the fact that you were doing this other stuff during the day is kind of blowing my mind. Yeah. Um, vocally, I stopped doing musicals when I was doing working at Four Kids because my voice couldn't hold up. How did you manage to do that? I stopped doing Four Kids. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's, no, I, I get, well, you had a better job. Yeah. It, well, no, no I, don't, I, I, don't mean, I didn't mean it that way. I meant, I meant just, No, no, no. It, you had it, a steady job. It was though. tough. I mean, deal. there were days where, I mean, I think if I'm being honest, I think at some point both probably suffered, you know, right. um, I know they yeah, were you're not the first person to say that. I mean, this yeah. is like a, a conversation we're having. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being a swing, you know, I was a swing for a while, which means that you're an offstage cover for the ensemble characters and sometimes the, uh, the stars of the show. Um, and then I went on to play one of the two uh, leads of the show. And that was when it was really hard because I was doing Shaman King at the same time. Whoa. So I was playing Roger oh. on on Broadway and then doing the dubs during the day. Oh my um, god! And and I, I want to hug you. <laughs> it was tough. I knew that that I probably couldn't sustain that for very long. Um, and so then it became once Shamkin was done. I mean, I auditioned for other things, but it became more interstitial. Like you know, they needed a sound alike for 1986 Turtles. I popped in. I played Raphael. Right. We did Dino Kings. I don't know what it was about that particular one that felt maybe easier vocally. Um, well, do you think you learned to do voices that you could sustain? Because I feel like I've learned that finally. I, I think <laughs> I learned that finally. I don't think I learned it great early. I mean, I... Because I, you audition, right? And you audition with all of right. yourself and you give it all you've got and then you realize, oh, I got I to gotta sustain totally, this. It's totally what it is. Because you want to please them and you want to... Yeah. And then you're like, wait, what if I get this? Uh-oh. And, and as it turns out, as I know you know, oftentimes we were cast as kids. Yeah. And you got to make it believable. So Yeah. And that's a lot of energy behind the voice. So it's not just the voice. It's 
the energy behind it, which even when you're trained, and maybe this is just me, my training goes out the window in a, in certain moments when I'm into oh, a character. Of course, of course. Yeah, you're Ugh. fighting you're fighting a demon, and you've got to <sighs> kill the demon. I watched a great video of you and Andrew Rannells uh, doing your react, oh, like yeah. making fun of the reactions that we used to do, because oh, it was always like, oh, ah, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, Andrew and I, I mean, uh, to get to to sort of be in his life all these years, uh, having started with, I think the first thing, I, first time I ever met him, he was actually casting something or, or directing a four kids mm -hmm. um, project. I can't even specifically Pro say. Oh, yeah, probably Sonic or Kirby. Yeah, or one exactly. Of those. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then he went on to work with my wife. Uh, and then uh, I, obviously we've been dear friends ever since. But, um, but I do feel like we had, I mean, even though I didn't see you all often per se, we had a, a relationship. I mean, we had. Yeah. You would hope to run into certain people. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, that was but, it. And I, and I mean, like on screen. So. Oh, yeah. There yeah. was there was real bonding that was happening in these characters. I mean. Yeah. Especially I was very two. mean. Anna was very mean to you, but I always it came from such a place of caring. Like, yeah. And that, that you know, you're who are, most of my scenes were with, like you were carrying that show. But if I got to do a scene like you would just hope that the other people recorded before you so you could hear them. Yeah. Like that's right. such a specific thing to dubbing when you're not working with each other. That's so and interesting. So, speaking of, someone did ask, we have fans who wrote questions. Yeah. They, they wanted to know if you were aware of the Pokemon Live musical and if you auditioned for it or if <laughs> like it was on your radar at all. Uh, I, aware, I didn't audition for it. Uh, aware of it. And am I wrong that somebody who did voices for the show was in it or some? Yeah, well, Andrew was in it. Andrew, Andrew was in it, right? And, and Darren. Dunstan and Darren was, was in of course. It. Yes, yes. Oh, Darren. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Darren Ver, he's going to see him soon. Yeah. I, it's, Please send him my very best. I will. That guy is so special. I had, yeah, I, I, were, I was working. I mean, it's the way the world works. Like, so I ended up in LA and so did Susie Goldish, who was the engineer. And she was like, please tell Sebastian. I mean, it's such a small little world of this stuff. Oh, yeah. It's Eric crazy. Stewart. Yep. What's he was he directing and acting. He is. He lives in Nashville. Uh, he, we'll he, see always, him. he always intimidated me ever so much. Really? Because he's, he's so. Yes, I get he it. He was such I a totally pro, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and and I was such a noob that like he had this aura. He had an energy. Like as he was a he was in charge. But, but he really was a big supporter. And he in a lot of ways, uh, he and, and, and Tony and Darren uh were more most instrumental in sort of saying hey you can do this that's uh, great you just i need love to, that you know focus on this or that and um but i ended up doing a thing with darren darren wrote uh a piece that we did this like audio story on too years later um, oh so funny i'll have to ask um, about that and then um what else uh I'm jumping around now. Sorry. Oh, so I wanted to talk to you because we did get a lot of questions about returning to Shaman King. And I know it was offered to you to do the, the newer version of Shaman King. Are you OK to talk about why you weren't able to do it? Uh, I I am, as long as it's not in any way. I mean, if it's public that it was offered to me, I don't want to speak, you know. Well, they did. That... Listen, they offered it like from what we know, they offered it to every cast member who they could were yeah. able to you know i mean they, they they did want the idea was to bring back as many people as they yeah. could and, um, and i will say your role was done by a female eventually yeah. so it's not i don't feel like that's a conflict and it's not abby yeah. is phenomenal and so i For feel sure. like because of that it's not sure. an issue uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest uh I, I i never know how it's a personal decision, ultimately, whether you do something or don't do it. But there was something about, and this isn't a comment on anyone who, who went on to do it, but there was something I wanted to do it uh, in my heart because it was a special time in my life. And to revisit it would have been really interesting and exciting. And they were very kind. Um, I felt, and, and this is maybe a worthy argument, maybe it ultimately you know, isn't for some, but I felt that we were at a time 
in our society and in our understanding that maybe this character should be played by someone of someone of Japanese descent. Like it didn't feel it didn't feel like uh, maybe like this white guy yeah, should do it. Yeah, that's so interesting. I had thought it was because your voice had changed. Well, that was also that was that was that was part of it. I did say. I mean, I think I I could have done it, but I did share with them also. You know, when I was doing it, it was pretty vocally taxing, and mm-hmm. you know, twenty some odd years removed from that, I don't I don't know that um, that I, that I needed to go down that road per se. So um, understand while that. I was still sort it's- of you know working in in, in musical theater, but um, but. So that is true. I, I, you know, I, I didn't know that I could sustain it in the way that might be expected. I think I could, but I just didn't know if I wanted to, to put myself in that position. But then beyond that, there was a, there was, there was an, uh, a gut instinct that maybe this 40, whatever it was at that time, 45 year old white guy didn't need to do it. I get it. That's so interesting. You know, and that is a debate. And I wish we had talked more about this because this is a debate in anime in general. And what, I mean, what, <laughs> there's sort of like some rules we go by and and they're unofficial but first of all so many characters were re- were recast because they were not done ethnically appropriately the first time so there were a ton of characters that were automatically recast um but why is that okay for some characters but because not because we're for... technically because there were characters of color there were characters that the no, world yeah, of, of um the show he sort of was internet was sort of international so the idea mm-hmm. in anime is that if you're localizing it um that the main characters are from the kind and again this is very loose are technically kind mm-hmm. of from the place where you're dubbing it and then if if an italian character comes in let's try to be appropriate for that like because there's an understanding that maybe like again and i'm using terrible examples but if you're if you're dubbing it into dutch <laughs> let's say maybe yes. there isn't yes. uh, so we're going to then assume that that's where the these main characters are. Steve am i insane in saying it this way i want to make sure i'm being uh delicate with how i say this i want to just also say like a show like squid game because the location is central to the plot they went with only asian dub actors for that when the location is mm-hmm. not central to the plot, they're more open-minded about where everyone is from. But again, this is a debate that we have in, within ourselves. This is a debate within the community. So I'm so glad that you said it. Yeah, it's an interesting, I mean, you know, I hear your argument entirely. And and in some regard, maybe the fact that I'm, I've always felt a little bit on the outside of the dubbing community where like I was, I sort of fell into it uh, and didn't really continue with it where maybe I didn't really understand the full uh, scope of that argument. It's an evolving discussion. I mean, that, and that's what all of this is. I mean, let's, let's ask the question. I mean, you know, site, okay, so site-specific, I understand what you mean. Do we think that Yo is a kid from California? I don't know. I mean, or do we, um, or do we think that he's a, a young Japanese kid? Steve, do you, I mean, what I do would you say think? It's the latter. Steve? I, yeah, it's... I would yeah, too. It's not like the like a four kids kind of dub where it's they kind of write out the fact that it's Japan and that's what the old Shaman King dub did. Though I think uh, what Tara was saying, I think was just when it's it adapt when it's adapted in another country, it's kind of just it, right. it's right, right, right. It, it's sense. more like yeah, because even I, I'm not going to say here's your answer and then that's that's end of discussion. But right, no, this, maybe because the fact that this yeah. show was created in Japan, yeah. so I think their instinct is often like, well, you know, let's name, let's give them Japanese names. It takes place in Japan. They adapt it over here, and it's like, okay, it's we're we're kind of doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, it yeah. felt it felt funny for me, despite the fact that I understand the basis of the industry. Mm-hmm. It felt a little funny for me in the moment to be Sebastian dubbing Yo. I get it. Uh, yeah. It was different than it was 20 some odd yeah, years sure. ago. Mm-hmm. That said, you know, I also, you know, didn't want to hemorrhage vocal cords. <laughs> yes. I, 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 but I, I'm so glad that is a conversation that we haven't had enough, I don't think, on this show, too. I mean, and, and then, I mean, then it goes down to like, okay, well, then should every dub project 
be done by whoever was native to that place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I dub like Spanish live action movies or, you know, there's all this kind of content. And you're like, okay, well, if this is being dubbed in 15 languages, then it's probably going to be. So it's 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 a it's a a crazy, but it's a crazy dilemma because it's. No, I haven't seen I haven't I admittedly haven't seen the new version. Was it it was originated in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. They did it. There and now they were just redubbing it in this particular. Yeah. Uh, yeah so okay. they dubbed so, it probably 15, yeah. 20 languages. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, a, right, it is, it's, I, I it's, get it. And, and I, you know, there are definitely projects now and we'll let you go soon. I know I'm watching the clock. No, no, um, it's okay. We're okay. There are definitely projects where it does state Spanish, Spanish origin only. And like the, the voiceover community in general has completely changed in that way, which is great. Mm-hmm. And I think, listen, we're, we're living through a, t- a time when luckily we're, we're noticing that. But for kids certainly was not worried about that. They were no, worried about no. getting it done quickly. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So, so and maybe, you know, and look, I, look, I'm a white presenting Latino who speaks fluent Spanish, but. It's not necessarily what I get cast right. to do, more so in voiceovers than anything else, ironically, because you don't see me. But, but um, it's good to know that you speak because Spanish. Because I, <laughs> I am a native Spanish speaker. So, um, or I should say I learned Spanish along with English growing up okay. in the States. My dad's from Uruguay. Oh. But um, but it was, it was a conversation. It was something that I struggled with at the time. And I felt strongly enough about the nuance mm-hmm. That coupled with what I knew was sort of double vocal strain on a crazy character that I knew would be updated to be maybe even more so. It was just enough to make me say, you know what? I want to do this so badly. I would love to get the band back together. Uh, It was a really fond time in my life that I still talk about, still share uh, in many stories. Um, But I felt like, you know what? I think in this case, I just need to bow yeah. out. Yeah, uh, I so and, and I'm sorry. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I and 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 for those and for the purists out there that, well, I guess there's two sides to the purist argument, yeah. right? But for the purists out there with regard with regard to the Fox Box version, um, you know, I do apologize that I wasn't able to fulfill that, but um, but I thanks for respecting sort of the oh the my gosh, process of that course. I went through. Yeah, that, no, thank you for sharing that too, mm-hmm. and I. This again, it comes down to like this is a big part of what people didn't like about four kids. Four kids was not shy about we call it localizing now. They were um very deliberately Americanizing it, which are two different right. ways of approaching mm-hmm. things. Totally. And right. we're so much more delicate in how we approach all of this stuff now. Thank God. Um, but there's still room to grow and learn and all of yeah. that. So I also love that, you know. That I have sort of this kindred spirit out there, Abby, who I don't know, but that, you know, awesome. was able to sort of go down that same road. And I kind of love that Yo was played by uh, my female. So it's, it's cool. Oh, so I want before we move on from Shaman King, I so someone else had a question online about uh, when you were working, differentiating between the Yo and Zeke characters. Was that difficult or was that did that just become second nature? No, it became second nature. I mean, you know, there was obviously register, right? I mean, Yo was uh, much higher and. uh, But there was like I was trying to thread a little bit of that extra rasp that Yo had and that Zeke kind of has sort of in the the lower timbre of Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's natural to my voice, but um I loved that I was able to sort of try something different and try something new. And that, that, that's where I feel like, despite the fact that I know, um, Steve, when you look back on it, there were probably a lot of issues that you had with it at the time. We really, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I know, I know I speak for more for all of us where like, we really did take it quite seriously. And, and there was real character work that we were trying to do within the scope of what we were allowed to do. Um, I mean, we had a ball and we get, we're, we were kooky and crazy and, 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 and didn't take ourselves too seriously. But the work, it was important to me. And anyway, with regard to Zeke, it was just cool to show a whole different color that I didn't even know was coming. I mean, we didn't even, I didn't even know. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. That was, was that a surprise? I was like, wait, what? We're doing, 
It's his it's his brother. Let's did you go. have to so, did you audition for Zeke or were they just like, oh, you're playing Zeke too? No, I think at that point they were like, let's we, he's your brother, so just figure it out. <laughs> How funny. Um, it was yeah. They were like, yeah. he's in the booth. Well, mm-hmm. let's just do whatever yeah. as much as he can do. Let's stretch him. Yeah. <laughs> like you said though, they start to, you know, trust you and rely on you and find ways to um and plus Zeke was a whole lot easier. I mean, I didn't have to generate this different kind of sound. Plus, he was so like, you know, I can't even quite recall, but um, <laughs> it was uh, it was much scenes, easier to talk into. Scenes like with this. yourself are the best. Oh, like, my, it's come so on. Much fun. Also, he's super cool. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a it's a cool cat. And here's my reminder, because uh, I want to double check, make sure it's still available. Yeah. The uh, if you look up Shaman King, original 2003 English dub TV series, yeah. SBBD, still available, still in print. That's the whole four kids version of the show wow. on Blu-ray. I gotta go back and and, and maybe take a your look. kid will want to <laughs> yeah. see dad and his, all his glory. Oh gosh, <laughs> I know, right? Um, um, people yeah. also asked about uh, working on Dinosaur King uh, later mm-hmm. years. Um, was that any different? I mean, was that just sort of like when you could show up, you did it? Or I mean, I love I love doing that show. I, I don't know why it didn't last longer. What I loved about that show was that my nieces and nephews at that point mm. were watching. Aww. So suddenly I had this different stake in, in it. Um, it wasn't just something cool that we did. It was actually something that was being consumed by people that I loved. So, yeah. um, yeah, it was, but again, you know, super high voice. What was I doing? What was I thinking? I mean, it's <laughs> but a little it came annoying easily to, to you. I mean, if it yeah, came it easily did. to you, they it were did, so excited to have a good, a good actor who could do that voice. Yeah. How many mm-hmm. seasons did we get out of that? That's an excellent. I don't. I don't. I never worked on that. Show. I had was moved it, to LA already. Yeah. So Steve, that's a. You were fancy. Question. You moved to LA. You were fancy. Fa- well, I don't know about fancy. I luckily had a job that allowed me to, to kind of be mobile. I, I was think shooting that's too- in, in Atlanta, so I was like, mm, well, amazing. Yeah, I was lucky. Very lucky. Also, I was. I mean, to be honest, and I've talked about this before. I was frustrated with four kids and how we were compensated and i was like i well, if i stay here this is what i'm gonna be doing and i i mean look we're here to talk about a a time in our lives that was really special with material that hopefully touched a lot of young people yeah but if you stop and think about despite the fact <laughs> that we were you know that at the time it felt like good pay at the time all the, all right. the while you're looking at it and saying, this is a multi-billion dollar yeah. industry. Yeah. And yes, like you're providing <laughs> the voices for it. It was, it wasn't a shocking from that standpoint. So I don't want to look, I don't want to, you know, seem like I'm trashing it or. No, or, no. I mean, listen, again, not, but, the work itself, we loved the work itself. We felt yeah. super lucky when, when you recorded turtles, I'm going to do like quick questions. Did you get to record with the other actors when you did turtles? Uh, no, because the new turtles, they worked all together in the same room, but this was a sound alike for the, the one. The turtles film. forever. Yes. Yeah. The one where it went back in time. Yes. So, but okay, I had so, you didn't so get much. Forever. Yes. I had so much fun trying to match that because that was the turtles that I grew up. Oh, on. Oh right? yeah. So whether or not I matched it or didn't like, I just love the sardonic humor of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wish there had been more of that. No, I auditioned for the one where you could all be in the same room at the same time, but I think it was just too hard to manage that schedule. But I think that, right? Because there was a new Turtles yeah. that they did where they all recorded. Oh, together. yeah. I got to like be mm-hmm. a small character once in a while. And it was the most fun thing oh, in was, the world. I can only imagine. Yeah. It's like recording a cast album. You're all there. Okay. Speed round. They're asking if you remember if you were in, you're not going to remember this, but I have to ask, Pokemon Chronicles, The Legend of Thunder. I don't think I was. I mean, doing okay. what? They What's said the you're listed, but that, <laughs> that they can't figure out who you oh, played in it. No, I think there's an error. Uh, yeah, I know. See, this is the problem. Unless we hear a sound clip. So if you guys have a sound clip of that, send it over. Uh, let's see. F-Zero, we think you were in. I think I may have done something. No, no, I didn't. No. Okay. So I, F-Zero, I think it's, I think it's on there. That. I think it's on my IMDb, but I don't think I did F-Zero. I think Let's I auditioned see. for it, maybe. Let's get that off of there. And so you know, you don't remember like quitting the role of Rex. You remember replacing. You never officially stopping Rex in uh, Yu Gi Oh. So we're trying to figure out what number you still are in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, I legit do not remember how that ended. I, okay, Steve. I, 
I'm an unreliable source here um, because I think I like I went back and watched a little bit of it. You might have been when they did the like we were talking about the uncut Shaman King. They did an uncut Yu Gi Oh too. I think that might have been when you stepped in for Rex or me. Uh, so that would have been Rex number two. In, uh, no, I think it was Rex number, number three. three. I don't know when yeah. I. I don't know how long I did it. I don't think I did it very long. I did it like twelve episodes or something, right? Interesting. So you, but you never officially Six quit, episodes. which means no, I don't okay. think so. I, Unless your schedule is so crazy that they were like, "Oh, we're having trouble booking him." That could have been. An, I that truly could not answer that question. For you. <laughs> I don't insane. know if I was quit, <laughs> if I fired, if it ended. It didn't end, obviously. I know, isn't it? Nuts um, that- but I don't think I. I don't think I just walked away. I mean. We were doing it. I think. I think. I. I think it was a set amount. I. I truly don't remember. Isn't that crazy? I know. I feel I like I, I recorded taken those. Notes. I think I recorded those with Eric, so he might remember. I mean, or it's just so I long just, ago. It's. I. It's. It's too hard. It's lost to time, and that's fine. But that I was wanna... the hardest vocally. Without. Oh yeah, the Rex one. Question. <sighs> yeah. Because it was just shredding your chords. Ridiculous. So, so maybe I did walk away. We were dummies. <laughs> I mean, so ridiculous. <laughs> We missed out on asking Sebastian about his time on Winx Club, so luckily he recorded something after the interview to talk about his experience on Winx. You know, I know you guys had a question about, um, some of your listeners had a question about Winx Club, which was another gift, really, uh, where I ended up playing Timmy, who was really fun and sort of a callback to Yuzumi, if you think about it. Well, really a callback to all of these high-pitched kid... um, sort of bookish uh, characters, which I really enjoyed playing. And I I sort of enjoyed the innocence of it and how he got pulled into so much action, despite maybe being more of a, uh, a, of a, an agent of the sidelines, as it were, if that's a thing. Um, But what I really loved was when they actually cast me as Palladium. And that was actually, I think the first time that I, tested out an accent um, on one of these shows. Uh, looking back on it now, it was probably pretty awful, but uh, but I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the language of that character and the demeanor and sort of like Zeke, but with an accent and a bit more pep. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. And uh, it's always interesting when you see the reboots that happen, you know, you kind of hold on to that nostalgia of, of having been a part of uh, the original. Anyway. Before we let you go, some of the things you've done after, because you're just, you've done so much incredible work. I never got, so I saw you in Elf. One of my closest friends did? Wrote, wrote Elf, Matt Sklar, who's like Oh, a that's right. So I didn't get to come backstage. I don't remember why I had oh, to leave, I wish but I you never had. got to tell you how good you are but you guys can hear sebastian on the cast recording of elf he's it's i i I, i'm gonna gush and get teary it's he was phenomenal so and i remember when matt told me you were cast and he didn't know i knew you and he's like it's the guy this guy named sebastian arcellus and i was like wait what (laughs) (laughs) and i was like i know him he's like you do and i was like yes (laughs) so Amazing. Uh, Matt's an amazing guy. That was an extraordinary experience. To this day, the hardest job I've ever done. Maintaining that level. Um, I mean, you guys know, it's, you know, Buddy the Elf, if you let that persona crack, even a tiny bit, and this was a full blown stage musical, not an hour and a half short show. It was a two and a half hour big band Broadway musical um, that it was, you know, you can't let that that persona crack or else the show kind of crumbles. Um, and it's it relentless. was, it's a relentless, ex- it was a relentless, yeah. it was relentless. <laughs> but it was extraordinary. And, and now that I connect the two, I mean, there was plenty of Dino Kings and yo Asakura in that timbre, that voice, that, mm-hmm. that sort of elf in nature that, uh, you know, I'm not particularly elf in nature. So, but there was something about, <laughs> which makes it funnier. Which makes it funny. Yeah, the taller yeah. you are, yeah. But here's the thing. It's all about essence, right? I called my wife and said, they want me to audition for Elf the Musical. And both of us instinctively were like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Even though, you know. 
I, it At first worked. glance, it might not. It worked. And it was so fun. And again, nieces and nephews, they got to come to opening. Uh, and the kids that were coming to that show, they, you know, come to the stage door and they think you're Santa Claus. It was very, That's very amazing. special. Very so, special. So where else can people hear? So the cast recording of Elf is a great place to hear Sebastian sing. Where else can people hear you? Or You I know, mean, it's, you... it's interesting. You know, I've done, I've done uh, a handful of Broadway shows. Uh, a lot of them are shows that were already running. So I'm not on uh, a lot of cast albums. Uh, per se, uh, or no, at all. So, uh, I mean, as far as, you know, I did a, a ton of voiceovers, like we all did, um, commercial voiceovers um, over the years. Um, so, and then between Dora and Go Diego Go, I played every animal and sung, sung to myself in 12-part harmony at, at times. Oh. I mean, um, and done all kinds of really fun things along the way. Um but uh, as far as where you can go now to see stuff, I guess it would just be, you know, a couple of the, the, the TV shows that I was fortunate enough to be a part of. But it's House not so of much. Cards. He was great. Yeah. Season one, House of Cards. I know Spacey's uh, not easy to watch, but uh, know, yeah. but Sebastian's but, worth but it. It was, a, it was a fun experience. Um, I was psyched when I saw that. So we'll let thanks. you go. Are you on social media? I don't even know. I am. It, yeah. OK, so where can people my, follow you? Yeah. Look up where uh, people can follow. Don't even know what my handles are, to be honest. Okay. Uh, Sebastian be underscore the... Arcellus on Instagram. And uh, mostly I mostly hang out on Instagram, okay, but I'm not we'll very good link. at social media. We'll put a link in the show notes so people don't have to spell your name. Because, you know, I yeah, don't, trust, I don't trust these people to spell it's it. It's a tough one. Um, a, sorry if I got too in the weeds on all no, that. No, it was but, great. But guys, no, it, thank it really you. is nice to go down memory lane. I kind of, I feel like Steve's sitting on some 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 feelings here, though. I feel like he have? has some. Oh, like, I don't want you to. No, I, I, I want to I like know I, how you really felt about that, that, that time. I can say that it was sort of like. Uh, All right. It's interesting. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. Maybe you've already, maybe you guys have already addressed this. No, no. It's it's interesting can, to me too. So Steve, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, I, my role here isn't to be devil like devil's advocate. No. Tara. Well, let's, Tara's let's... like you were great. And I'm like, you know, no. It's like I'm here to tell you you sucked. Oh, I'm not yeah, trying to imply that, but no, <laughs> I, no, because uh, I, because when Pokemon was re uh, released, yeah. I was in that age group, and I kind of was keeping up with the four kids stuff for a bit yeah. but i was obviously getting older your tastes change and, I, and of course and you kind of and me i'm like and like i said i was a fan of the shaman king manga so i was kind of disappointed i'm like oh i wish the dub was more you know mm -hmm. geared of course to you know uh my like my age and that's why the uncut dub i was like there from day one i got both of those dvds i was i was excited for it oh interesting and I, was bummed, yeah. and I was bummed that that didn't continue but, so he was like the target demographic for the uncut yeah. versions, which is so fascinating to me because they didn't make enough money to continue making them. And the new one, like I, is the new one more geared towards older audiences? Yeah. The yeah. new one is like a like a very faithful adaptation of the – right because uh, uh, it's a reboot and it's basically the English version of that. So right. it's more – it's truer to the original script. It's not as you know jokey – characters don't some like a lot of the characters don't have accents there's a bit more of that mm -hmm. um but i i will say you know and i know like you know you chose not to uh return to the show but when i found out they were making the show i was very excited at least to see that yeah. some of the original dub actors sure. were contact i was like great because my whole thing was like you know that dub it's like i think it sounds great it's just let's just do it the way, way it's written. let's do it the way it should be done I yeah, hear you. The Did way you... it was written was just not what yeah. I wanted at the time. And of course, that's now I'm, interesting. I'm much older and I'm kind of just like, you know what? Yeah. It's whatever. But at the time I was like, oh, it's like, I love, I, I love this show so much. Okay, I, I'm going to brag for Steve, but Steve's <laughs> a professional storyboard artist on Rick and Morty. So he was also watching hmm. these shows as a kid who was artistic and understood like what he was seeing. So, but that's what, and that's honestly why I love having him to talk oh, yeah. to you about all this stuff because that's incredible congrats that's i mean amazing thank you yeah i mean i there's i was drawn a lot of shaman king stuff back then Hold ah. on, i'm gonna grab something off the shelf yeah he uh, entered so yeah. the four kids used to have these promos where they would have kids enter contests and draw pictures steve was entering the contest what look at that yeah no, he's right, a I'm fan. I'm off a yo figure. Oh, yeah. I sorry. Have. This is an audio podcast. Steve has an sorry. enormous <laughs> yo statue. Yeah. Beautiful statue. Also, Anna and Ren and you have an Steve Anna statue. I do. I have one. I'll show you in the outro. Okay. Tara, did you feel um, like in the next? Did you feel like in this recent um, 
adaptation, you were able to sort of flex a muscle that you weren't able to in. Uh, yeah. So I'll yeah. explain what they what they did. They basically condensed. I don't remember how many seasons we did, but they condensed all of that into season one. I also knew that what we were and, and this is the difference with with anime and the way we dub now. We're much more aware of the manga fan base and we're much more loyal to things like that. And and, and I think that's why maybe I feel OK doing it because I know I'm. We're honoring the, the and not every show, but we're honoring the initial material more, which is mm-hmm. what the the hardcore fans like Steve want. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I they because we condensed season one and then it took off into a whole other place. There there were like emotional scenes, and I it was fun to do. Oh, that's fun. Um, I don't and they, and we talk about this on the show a lot too. It didn't get promoted maybe the, as much as it should be. I don't know that as many people saw it as we would have liked, which is a bummer. But are they continuing with it? Do we know if it will? No, have? well, so there was a a they cut the the writer wrote something that happens many years later mm. uh called Flowers, Shaman King Flowers, which was just released but did not receive a dub. So I don't know if that's because it wasn't successful enough. We don't know the reasons behind it, but okay. I yeah, so it's a bummer. Okay. But um, that's your answer. But Sebastian, more about <laughs> you. I'm so excited to see what you do next. He just finished do it, touring with Into the Woods, which got rave reviews. He was the baker. You guys, I, I just want you to hear him sing. Please go get the Elf soundtrack. That's really my push. <laughs> that was a special experience because I got to be able to do that with my wife. So I was oh, into the, woods. the yes. baker and the baker's wife in Into the Woods with my wife. It's this sort of nothing better than that. It's the Holy Grail of musical theater. We were so... <sighs> blessed to be a part of that production that specific you're production. an annoyingly talented couple uh, like, I, I feel like <laughs> you're those people ah, oh, oh sebastian and stephanie they're so talented it out? no uh it honestly i'm just so happy that i got to see your face um you thank you for doing this thank you for having me i thank feel you. really fortunate to be a part of this extended universe uh it really has been and remains very special to me so for those that you know still love that um that time and that content from our lives uh i uh i salute you and 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 i and i thank you for letting me um be a small part of this what you guys are doing which i think is amazing i'm going to go back and listen to all our pals talk about their experiences Sebastian Arcellus. All right, I'm going to put his a link to his social media in the show notes because if he is in another uh, play or TV show or something, you guys do not miss out. Mm-hmm. What a great dude. Yeah. I mean, it's, like I said, I'm very familiar with him because he's, a le- he's the lead in, mm-hmm. you know, one of my favorite, you know, manga and anime when I was growing up. So, you know, I... Something I skipped. I skipped this time, and I'm I'm bummed that I did because I knew he had a time constraint. Um, I didn't even ask him where he studied, what his background is, and you know, training. Um, because for someone who's able to sustain that much and do those right. kinds of shows, I didn't even ask him that. And, and we got right we because we kind of just got right into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'm sure I can find that online. Uh, there is you know there is Google for that kind of stuff, but. Just a, a solid performer. I mean, just an all-around solid performer. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, Stephen. You were gonna. What were you? Oh, I'm. I'm glad he asked you at the end to clarify because I, I because you're not I, just a grumpy person. That's not what it is. And I yeah. think you explained and it I'm, really well. And I and I and I think I look a little more intimidating now because I am an adult. <laughs> not that with not, a beard. No, with yes. A beard. Oh, with a beard. Yeah, not that like anyone. Everyone's gonna feel that intimidated by a dorky anime fan. Well, but also I'm, you have a One Piece flag behind you. I feel yeah, like it's dead. once once they it's disarming. I'm like, recording this yeah. in my bedroom, and it's like. <laughs> yeah, no one has no, to be I don't... afraid of me. Um, but but I... I think also because I bogart the conversation sometimes when it's my friends, people yeah. want to make sure that you get all your stuff yeah. in, and that's on me. But <laughs> I, you know, and I'm never. It's like I I never want to grill people on this show because like yeah, did I did I have a lot of opinions there, and probably did I say a lot of stupid things on the internet as a 13, 14 year old? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, I'd, but I was honest. I said like I. Yeah, I just like my biggest gripe was just like that. It was the direction of the dub, unfortunately, was targeted towards a younger demographic, which I didn't want for one of my favorite manga at the time. But right. I, I remember, and this isn't a lie, I remember when, 
like after the remake was announced and then when the cast announcement started rolling out, I remember texting my buddy and be like, dude, they're getting people back. <laughs> it's like, and we were, and we, we were psyched because I, I, I have one of my friend, one of my friends from back in New York, Mike, him and I, he's the, he's the only Shaman King fan I know of. And, you know, we, we talk about that dub all the time because we remember some of the hokiness from that we'll, you know, we like to recite and stuff, but I, we still kind of thought like, we liked some of the, like, we liked a lot of the voices. It's just, you know. Right. Well, it's, it's again, you were at an age when you did not want to see edits. And that's yes. why, again, I'm so glad we spoke to Waldo Cabrera, whose mm-hmm. idea it was to make these uncut dubs because there was a need for it. Unfortunately, the dollars weren't enough to continue right. it. I mean, and one of the questions we got that I knew Sebastian wouldn't know the answer to were how many, if we kept recording and they just weren't released Ooh, or if they stopped after that. a certain number. Yeah. But I feel like he probably he, wouldn't have known. No, yeah. I, there was a few questions that I just knew he wasn't going to mm-hmm. have the detailed answers to. Um, because if even like the directors don't remember necessarily, yeah. then yeah. Um, it was just so long ago. But mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'm... Y- it does make you just such a, a the perfect person to be talking to about this stuff. Mm-hmm. There, are, there's a very specific Shaman King audience that I meet at conventions, and it's not often, but once in a while, someone will see at like the, my my picture of Anna at a convention, and I had a guy freak out because again, I think Shaman King fans feel kind of alone in their <laughs> love for it. Like this guy, yeah. I, I I wish I had videotaped him freaking out about shaman king and going into and like he was just so excited and this was mm-hmm. before i believe the 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 netflix version came right. out so he just oh, okay. freaking so out is, yeah. yeah oh my god it was so it was so sweet and mm-hmm. you could just tell that he hadn't had enough people to talk to about right. it who shared his I, interest i sure shit don't it's it's yeah unfortunately like just like a a series that when the manga was running it was you know it was in the same you know, it was standing, you know, shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of other giants in right in the media in like that medium already. So it was kind of hard for it to really stand out. Um, and then it's just, you know, and of course, like the new series on Netflix and, you know, at least I'll call it Netflix saying like they, they, they don't advertise their stuff. So it's kind of yeah. just it's it's Shaman King is this little engine that could it's. And the story about the creator is really fascinating. Not to get off on too much of a tangent. No, tell tell me. I you know I don't know what you know. There so there is there is a there's a YouTube documentary about the uh, creator Hiroki uh, Takei. Um, mm-hmm. It's fascinating. You know, it's he's okay. He's, we should all check that out. Yeah, he's an interesting yeah. guy, and he is uh, he is a peer of the creator of One Piece. They were they were coming up into the okay. industry at the same time together, and it's it's fascinating, but. Well, now, have you, as someone who likes Shaman King, have you read the manga of Shaman King Flowers? I have not read Flowers yet because I think when uh, I forget what company. Sorry, I can't see it on my shelf. No, but I, I love hearing your your reasoning because I this is inside fandom and that's that's who's listening to this. For so. me, it was just like um, when the manga got re relicensed. I forget what company off the top of my head did it. Okay, it was. All of it was free to read on Amazon Prime, so it was just, oh. you know, eventually they, they put out physical editions, but it was so easy for me to read that, but I don't think Flowers was, so I think that's why there wasn't, like, an immediate, oh. you know, it might be different now, I'm not, on Kindle, on Kindle, that's what it was. So it's not that you're, you've, you haven't you have made a decision not to read it, No, is my question. I have not okay. refused to read it, I'm just, I'm a terrible reader. I didn't know if you were standing on principle or somehow. No, okay. not at all. Okay. I just yeah it's something i have not gone around to and you know, okay. as much it's on I, your list yes That's as much as like shaman king i never read all it all the way through up until a couple of years ago um, okay so that was my other question because shaman king kind of didn't really end end when we did it at four kids did mm-hmm. you realize that it didn't have a definitive ending or I, were you already given up on it we call it the full metal alchemist treatment uh, <laughs> with anime okay what is explain that to me that's when the anime really it starts as a somewhat faithful adaption and then it branches off because it's getting too close to the manga okay. release so there's not enough buffer so it just become it just turns into its own thing and that's oh what, interesting yeah. so that's what happened with okay King. so when they did a reboot it's <laughs> That's what we call a, a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, where it's like, okay, okay, they're doing a new show, and this time it's gonna follow the manga story. So, 
I love it. I'm learning. I'm learning the terminology <laughs> now. That's all. That's very. That's very inside, and I love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, listen, I'm glad that we had the conversation about authenticity and casting mm-hmm. and when it's appropriate. It's something I struggle with when I take jobs all the time. Yeah. Um, and I think it's. Again, it's I, not, I don't know. I don't it's know not a. Doing. It's not a conversation that's going to be settled in just one podcast. It's. Yeah, and. and I don't think I'm the most well equipped uh, to discuss, uh, you know, the uh, semantics of all that. Right. Um, well, I do know that the studios are making mm-hmm. because I see it enough that I know there are certain shows, live action and dubs, where it is a, where they are only be casting authentically in mm-hmm. terms of like where it's set. like. So I know that is happening, and I'm trusting their. This is again me giving over power. Like I'm trusting their decision making on mm. when that's appropriate, since I do see it happening sometimes, yeah. and I'm glad it's happening. Um, and I have to just trust in them because I do know there are people who do feel like you know in you know like my friends who like it and like Mike Center Nicholas for example. Mike is someone who has thought a lot about this stuff. Like, I just know him and I know he has. And I know Mm -hmm. a lot of the shows that he works on are absolutely like the dub is cast with an all Asian cast. And Mm -hmm. I know that also because he'll put some or someone will put something on Facebook like, hey, we need more Asian actors from this region or who who can do this. And so I know that there are people who have definitely lost sleep over this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to trust I'm trusting in their judgment if they're casting me that they've put put the decision you know they've made a decision based on input from the creators input from the studios input from people that are way above my pay grade um and maybe that is just justifying having a job and i don't know and if that and i'm open to criticism about that for absolutely like i i love my job but if you told me this is going to be cast authentically from now on and only if the character happens to be from america can you do it i would understand and Mm -hmm. i would go with that decision so um I'm so glad that he brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, respect his choice, you know, and I Yeah. But at so the same much. time I don't want to guilt uh, guilt him, but if Sebastian was in the new version, I would have been excited. I, I respect his decision. I would have listen, again, I love Abby. Mm-hmm. It would have been really fun to work with Sebastian. Mm-hmm. But I I think listen, we you know, we talked a little bit afterwards too. Uh he I hope someone listening, you know, he is open to doing a lot more voiceover. Um it's something he he loves to do. He's open to doing it. Um, and some of our friends are directing, and I'm certainly going to let them know that he is available right now for that kind of work. Um, and blah blah blah. I'm also gonna. I've bugged him to get uh, be online in a place where he can sell his autographs. I don't know if you guys know about Streamily.com. Hopefully, uh, he will be up there. We will. By this point, I think we will have had our four kids event. Uh, but if for some reason I have not annoyed you about it enough. It's called streamily.com. They do different events with different shows where actors sign autographs. Uh, and I want to make sure that he gets on there. Um, oh, gosh, you know what we didn't even do during the intro? Where can people find us, Steve? It's okay. I remembered. Uh, <laughs> you could go to our website. That's 4kidsflashback.com. Use the number four in the URL. You get all the links uh, to where we're at on there, wherever you get your podcast. And also, if you like our podcast so much, so much that you want to give us five bucks a month for some bonus content, head over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash four kids flashback. Once again, with the number four, you get episodes yes. there a week early, ad free. And plus some other cool things we do there. Sometimes we do uh, some exclusive screenings there of some lost episodes like Ultraman Tiga. And we'll find some cool, like you know, some other cool stuff, like some old scripts from shows like Yu-Gi-Oh. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you want to leave us a message with a memory, a comment, a concern, a question. I think I might have said question twice. I don't know. <laughs> Speakpipe.com slash four kids flashback. Uh, Darren Dunstan and I will answer your your voicemails. I guess they're messages more than voicemails. I don't know. I, I, I guess we can use the word voicemail loosely now. Um, also, uh, there are some great things for sale. You are probably will probably have a promo for this, so you might hear this twice. Uh, okay, wait. The website is weird, so I'm going to spell it out for you. It is ebay.com slash usr slash flashback for kids uh and there you can find autograph stuff that is 
all the proceeds are going to charity directly from eBay to charity. Uh, all stuff that the cast feel strongly about. Uh, there are uh, Alzheimer's uh, Association, autism uh, associations. Uh, I'm checking out different ones at the moment because I was told that one of them uh, is not a favorite of people on the spectrum. So I am doing my research now. Uh, there are also cancer treatment places, uh, places for the unhoused, uh, all different kinds of charities. We wanted to make it as diverse as possible so that, um, you know, I know that you guys all have different things you believe in and feel strongly about. So I uh, wanted to make that diverse. Uh, and that is my spiel. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've talked too much now. Well, if if that's all uh, said and done, then we'll catch you next time. Four Kids Flashback is a production of Maji Media, hosted by Tara Sands and Steve Yurko. Producers are Zach Logan, Tara Sands, and Steve Yurko. For more information, go to fourkidsflashback.com. That is the number four. And if you worked at 4Kids and have a story you want to share, please email us at 4kidsflashback at gmail.com. You can find us on social media at 4kidsflashback. And to listen early and ad free, head to patreon.com slash 4kidsflashback. And for podcast merchandise, find links on our website and link tree. As they say on every podcast, if you liked this show, please subscribe, rate, and review, and tell your friends or four. If you want to check out other Maji Media podcasts, go to Maji, M-A-J-I, dot media. Thanks for listening. <laughs>